welcome back to an episode of the open source cafe and today we have on here with us and uh, might know them from wilco we did an amazing uh, you know event in the past and thousands and thousands of folks joined in it was very amazing a lot of lot of nice feedback a lot of nice uh, you know discussions and we gave away some exciting prizes um but we we were here to you know talk a little bit more with with on about the experience and about wilco and what they're building and what's coming in the future but moving forward on would like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself yeah sure first of all thanks for having me uh it's it's a real pleasure um so i'm on uh i'm one of the founders at wilco um and i spent most of my career either as an engineer or managing engineers um i've been at companies like we work and and handy um and built engineering teams from you know a handful of people all the way to uh dozens and hundreds um in one of the common themes i saw throughout most of my career is that <clears throat> need to upskill you know developers don't really have a good way to practice and i was constantly always looking for ways to help them do that so uh, i always joke that uh you know being a vp of engineering is is an hr role rather than an engineering role uh and part of hr is supporting the growth of your people and how did you like realize that like the you know the training part that you just mentioned yeah what what i realized was that you know what what's cool about software engineering is that we get to solve interesting challenges right i mean you know we all do that you've been there i'm sure you've had lots of challenges where uh you were you know uh constantly looking for a way to solve something and then a few days later the solution emerges and you're so happy uh and maybe there's a production outage uh and you're struggling to fix everything and you feel like this is you know this is too much to handle and then suddenly you realize what's the best way to do this but most of our work isn't based on intuition in the same way that you know both of these two examples that I gave it's a lot of methodology and a lot of experience that allows you to handle yourself in those situations you know having the composure when something goes wrong having a checklist that you go through making sure that things you know the the good the, the right things happen right that lessons are being learned and i saw that people around me are only able to capture those lessons if you will when they actually encounter that situation and that way i thought to myself what if we take developers and just expose them to simulations of real world events and maybe that way regardless of what their baseline is you know they could have 2 months of experience or they could have 20 years of experience if you give them those simulations they'll be able to gain additional experience very quickly and as an added bonus in a very safe way right because they're not actually harming anyone or anything uh because it's not a real system. Um so you know that's like a common theme that I saw throughout my career and and a way I was looking to solve this throughout my career. And uh th- thanks a lot for sharing and I agree because oftentimes people think that if you're a senior engineer you don't need the you know like tutorials or the support or the materials or whatever. Uh they just expect you to I'm not saying this. I've seen people like who are senior engineers say the same thing. So I think that's that's great. Yeah. Um, and and you know what? You know your first day. That, that's probably the perfect example, right? Your first day on the job. Maybe you went to college. Maybe you went to a boot camp. Maybe you studied online. You know how to write code, but that's it. That's the extent of your knowledge, right? And you go to work, and your team lead says, "Why don't you familiarize yourself with the team and get everything set up on your computer and get to know the architecture and the and the build system?" But you don't know anything about any of those. These are not skills that you learn anywhere. Yeah, I agree. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about like how you built Wilco and um, how are you solving these challenges with Wilco? Sure. So, you know, given all of that, you know, I, like I said I was passionate about this throughout my career, my career and um I have two co-founders who were also very passionate about this topic and when you started brainstorming on on you know the best way to tackle this, one of the things that quickly emerged is a continuation of that simulation analogy that I gave you earlier, like how do we build on top of that? 
And then we came to this idea of letting you join a fantasy company. And that company has a production-like system with logging and monitoring and analytics and load balancing and a real data set. Um, you know, all the biggest complexities of a real environment. And most importantly, colleagues and team leads and product managers and QA, DevOps, all of that. And we said, if we let people join that fantasy company, then we can get them to train or to practice in a simulated environment. And that way really upskill quickly. And we can expose them to simulations that do a good job of mimicking the complexity of a, of a real world situation. So let's take as an, as an example, um, you know, you join a company and you've been there for a while and then they tell you, hey, Kunal, we have a performance problem in production. Please figure out what happened, what's the root cause, what's the extent of the damage, fix it and communicate it to stakeholders. And you know, these are things that you need to practice, but I don't want you to practice the fix it part. That's, that's the easy part, right? You've learned how to do that uh, when you studied, but how do you even know that something's wrong in production? What do you do to investigate once you found out? Um, how do you um, ensure that lessons are learned and implemented? Uh, when do you go for quick and dirty fix? When do you go for something more meaningful? You know, it's a lot of tiny decisions and decision-making process that you pick up, you know, over the years. And we think that by practicing in a separate environment, you can really accelerate that and do it in a very safe way. And what do you think the transition is like, like once, once the person is like doing it, like the, the quest, like the simulation, and then they're in, put in the real world. So do you think there are any like uh, challenges associated with it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of how, all- How is one supposed to take it? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, no simulation is a perfect uh, duplicate of, the, of real life. And even in real life, you know, uh, no two situations are alike. So obviously, there are always differences. But we believe that the more you practice um, in those situations, the better you are when they actually arise, even if they're not, you know, completely identical to what you've practiced. So we encourage people to practice as much as they can. And by the way, it's a free product. So, you know, anyone can sign up and start practicing and, and you're very, very encouraged to, to go, over, uh, go over scenarios and or quests as we call them and, and practice each and every one of them. And then what we think will happen is that when you take that back into your job, you gain several things, but most importantly, I think you gain what we call a senior mindset, which is this, very elusive combination of uh, intuition and, um, and confidence and a few other factors that really let you tackle the hard problems without having to worry. Um, I mean, obviously we want you to do things right, but uh, sometimes you know, that, that, uh, that fear of doing things right can paralyze you. And when you gain experience and when you gain intuition and when you gain the confidence, you can actually do things. Um, and that even opens up the possibility of gaining more experience, right? Because then, you know, you, you encounter new scenarios and, and you go through them and gain additional experience. And it becomes this virtual cycle um, that I think is really important for the life and work of a software engineer. In addition to experience, if I, when I talk about like simulations, I, I think one of my, my priorities and one of my like uh, goals is to like try things out that I can't do in, in the real world. So what is it, what is that, like what are some of the things that I can do that with will go that I might not be like ideal in the real world? Like, you know, just break production. Yeah, something. yeah. I mean, first of all, yeah, break production <laughs> as much as you want. And, <clears throat> but even more than that, um, you know, when you're in real life, you want to do things right. And, and, and that's, you know, it makes sense, right? <laughs> we want to do things right. Uh, but to learn, sometimes you actually have to do things wrong. So it happens organically, right? We don't get everything right. We make mistakes. Everything's great. But the price of a mistake could be really high versus in a simulated environment where the price of a mistake is, you know, meaningless. Um, and you can even make them deliberately, right? You can choose 
to solve the quest the wrong way just to see what happens. And that is a really important educational experience that you don't really get to do in real life. Um, so that's just, you know, one, one example. And you can bake, break production, you can insult your, uh, your colleagues if you want. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, unlike real life, uh, it's easier to mend relationships. Um, not that we encourage you to insult your colleagues uh, on Wilco, but like I said, making mistakes is important. And sometimes um, you can say the wrong thing. Uh, you can um, break a system. You can, um, you know, have data migrations that, uh, that cause errors, you know, anything that you can think of. Uh, just the fact that you can try it out deliberately and make a mistake, I think, is is really important. Couldn't agree more. And uh, yeah, I, I believe like uh, what these, you know, like definitely like it, it can't really mimic, mimic like an entirely real world environment. But the whole point of simulation is just like, you know, it's enough for you to get started. Like if you just transitioning into a new cor new company, for example. So let's talk about that. Uh, let's say I'm, I have a company, right? I have, um, we have our own open source projects. We have our own, you know, Slack channel and Discord uh, private community, like my team members, right? And let's say we onboard someone new and they want to work on our projects. They want to get, you know, understand the, how we communicate, how we work, what all tools we use. So for companies or like for individuals, how can they get that personalized experience for anyone who joins the company? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, first and foremost, I, I'll say that I think even a generic experience is super important uh, because, you know, when, when you interview developers um, and you know, all things being equal, you'd rather have someone with a lot of experience, even if it's not, uh, you know, the ideal experience for your tech stack or anything like that. But of course, there's a lot of internal knowledge within your organization that needs to be preserved, that needs to be disseppiated, that needs to be um, constantly practiced by everyone on the team. Uh, and that's where our quest builder comes into play. Uh, and the quest builder allows anyone to build their own quest. Um, so you basically write on top of the Wilco infrastructure and the fantasy company that people join and all of that. You have all of that in your fingertips um, and you can write quests that, um, let's say, exercise an internal infrastructure that you really want people to, to know. Or maybe something, something happened in your company and you wrote a post-mortem document, uh, right? I mean, we've all been there, right? Something bad happened. You wrote a post-mortem. Maybe a few people read it, uh, but then afterwards, you know, it's gone somewhere in the archive. No one notices it anymore. The lessons aren't learned properly. However, what if you could actually build a quest from that scenario and let people play that quest, whether it's new people joining the team or whether it's, you know, people who haven't experienced that in six months or 12 months or whatever. And that way the knowledge is really preserved and that way the lessons are really implemented because everyone is re-experiencing that um, scenario again and again and again. Um, and, you know, repetition is, is an important part of, of what we do. Couldn't agree more. So how can one get started with like building their own quests? Um, so first of all, you know, start by, by signing up to Wilco, trywilco.com. Um, you can sign up for free, start playing quests. So you can go on, on trywilco.com and, and sign up and start playing quests. But then if you want to create quests, we'll have the quest builder coming up really soon. Um, by the time you're listening to this, it, it might already be out. Um, you can follow us on Twitter to check for the announcements. Uh, and then from within the platform, you'll have a tab um, where you can build your own quests. And you know whether you're an individual that just wants to build out their portfolio or practice something cool, um, or whether you have a business reason um, to create a quest and share it with the community, um, you know, it will, it will be great to see uh, to see everyone's creation. Yeah, I'll be making one as well, so make sure you check it out. And uh, you can follow Wilco for on Twitter for more updates. And when it's out, you'll know it. And uh, obviously, we will share it on our social media. So when I when I, when I will create a quest, so you know, because we do a lot of boot camps and courses. 
So it'd be fun to get some real world experience behind that. Thanks a lot for joining on. It was really great talking to you and really excited to see, you know, what you're building at, at Wilco and solving a real world problem. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for giving me time. For everyone else, uh, do check out the links in the description below. Check out trywilco.com, get started today. And uh, yeah, it's basically what thank, thank you very much. This was this was great. And we, uh, we love uh, love working with you and the, uh, and the support that we're getting. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to, to seeing what people build. Looking forward to it. So yeah, if you build something, you can share it on socials. You can tag Wilco. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.